Right, I've got one very simple and straightforward question for you. Beauty or beast? Now in life we have to make some choices and one of them is the golf clubs that we decide to play and there's very much two clubs we're going to look at that one you would describe definitely as beautiful and the other one as a bit of a beast and the question is as an average golfer which one should you choose and which one would you choose? Yeah I've got two clubs in my hand and uh, they are definitely I think you can describe like I said as beauty and beast and one of them is the Cobra T-Rail which I would describe as a beast. I tested it recently and one heck of a club and uh, got some unreal performance out of it. And beg the question, why don't more average golfers use it? And on the other side of the spectrum, there is beauty. And that is the Tiger Woods irons from TaylorMade. I think these are stunning. They also perform extremely well, but there are definitely compromises that you need to make to decide to play one or the other. Is there a right or wrong? Can we be, is looks enough for you to buy a golf club or is it all gonna be down to performance? I'm gonna have a look how these two compare in terms of numbers and at the end of it, which one would I choose? Is there a right and is there a wrong? Now they say beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but I firmly believe that if you've gotta choose either of these two clubs based on looks alone, then surely I think the majority would go for the uh, Tiger Woods tailor-made iron. But let's start it there. Comments down below is what I'm looking for and a general sense of opinion. In terms of what you like to see off the shelf, which would you prefer, something like this and the T-Rail or something like this, which is this shiny blade-like club that we all aspire to use, or at least I think we do. So that's the first question I'm gonna ask you. Anyway, my, let's put these two behind the ball and just have a look at these at address. Some images up on screen for you now. They are hugely different and they're gonna bring different things to different people. And confidence is one major issue that we all struggle with as average golfers. And again, if you're looking at the two clubs in terms of a confidence perspective, and this is only seven iron, don't forget, so God help us when we've seen the four iron or the three iron perhaps in the Tiger Woods clubs, but there's a huge difference in terms of the mass behind the ball. Now it's a positive and a negative because what I'm trying to look at in today's video is that there's, there's no right or wrong in this. I've focused heavily in recent weeks on clubs that are very much game improvement styles clubs that make the game easier. But there's another side to the game as well. And there's the enjoyment factor, the, the aspirational side of things that, that, like I said, we all want to be able to play this butter-like blade, or a lot of us will do anyway. And a lot of us, myself included, will struggle with the looks of the likes of the T-Rail and always be drawn to the likes of the Tiger Woods iron. So again, what I'd like to know, I'm going to start off with this because again, I'm drawn to it first of all. I love this club. It was my number one blade club for 2019 and I think it's a lot easier to use than it perhaps looks like as well I'm going to hit some balls now but this is all about like I said mentality once again the average golfer's mentality question it is it all about confidence do we go for the bulkier clubs is there something in the middle which again is the big option because these are either ends of the spectrum but this thing sits lovely behind the ball it's just a piece of absolute art in terms of golf clubs I love this thing now, I mean, these are, these are just like, they're like butter. <laughs> they sound like butter. If you don't like that thing, then it's not a big deal. So I'm just trying to gauge again more about opinions this video is about. It's not like I said about right or wrong. Are you bothered how a club feels? Are you bothered how it sounds? It's a big deal, you know. I mean, manufacturers spend a big, a lot of effort. There's some huge things going on in terms of... Uh, uh, new releases coming very shortly and they concentrate very much on sound and feel. Does it bother you? I absolutely love the feeling of that which is just that pure forged iron. It's so crisp off the club face. I can hit these things all day long. The other big deal of course is don't forget if you've got the skill level to do it and I'm not going to attempt it on here because I'll probably shank one straight into the camera. There's the ability to sort of flight this ball quite a bit different. You can move the ball around definitely a lot easier in terms of shaping a ball from left to right, right to left, if you've got that kind of ability with this type of club. And I would guess, and I've not tried it, you might struggle to do that with the likes of the T-Rail. But like I said, the big thing is at address, you've got to have a bit of confidence, I think, in your ball striking capabilities. And you go to the T-Rail, and I think, like I said, it is the opposite in terms of extremes. This thing is massive. Now, first of all, what I don't think is that I don't think I can miss with this, so my confidence is kind of, 
I know I'm going to get club on ball, I know it's going to go down there somewhere, and I know that from previous testing that I've done, hitting half a ball, half a swing rather, is good enough to get this ball going. So, the thing in my mind, and like I said, I'm asking you as well, how many, what's the ratio here of split? I can tell you now that I'm still drawn towards that club over there. Irrelevant to what this does in, in terms of performance. And it's a terrible, terrible attitude to have, really, because... There's a bit of mat on that ball, to be fair, but it flies down there. I mean, in terms of distances, these are two seven irons. They're about six degrees difference in terms of loft. And again, people get obsessed with th this idea of the difference in the lofts. I couldn't care less, to be honest with you. Like I said, the, the number in terms of loft has no relevance to me. How far each of these goes in terms of distance has no interest to me whatsoever. I choose to play the clubs that I play for the reasons that are important to me. But I just think loft is... Well, it's neither here nor there. You know this is going to be longer, but so what? This is such an easy club to hit. I've picked it up again for the first time since I did the review a week or so ago. And I've got to say, it's, it's so impressive. But the big deal is, and I want to get some numbers and sure up now. The whole thing I want from this video is I want comments and opinion. What makes you choose your clubs? And, and that could be a number of things, like I said, an absolute number of things. And again, we've, we're not even going to look at dispersion, how tightly these are packed. I've got to say, last week when I did the testing with this, it was mega impressive. I don't think there's the kind of the flyer balls out there that we used to get, the variables in terms of clubs anymore. You used to look at a club like this and you could hit a ball, sort of one ball could fly out another 10 yards previous than the, uh, different than the previous ball. I think that kind of thing has been eradicated. There's a lot more consistency in all this. So that, for me, is not a reason anymore. Can I hit a ball from, let's see if I can hit a ball from, uh, from left to right. That's away from the camera. It's a damn good go. It's moving a yard or so from left to right and there's nothing wrong with that. I ain't going to attempt, like I said, to hit uh, a bit of a draw because that lens on that camera is too expensive. Anyway, I'm going to hit some numbers. I'll compare them both and then we'll do an overall evaluation on kind of what is the difference? Why would we choose one or the other? And our, as average golfers, are we all just a little bit mad? Right, interesting review and interesting set of numbers. And like I said, very much two opposite ends of the spectrum and two extremes. But there's always things that come up in numbers that sort of surprise me. And don't forget, we're talking five and a half degrees loft difference with these two clubs. But I've always said it. There are a lot more things that go into... Um, what a, what a ball does and what a club does other than just loft and like I said these things don't forget the T-rail the CGs are way way back and without them being as strong lofted as they are that ball would just balloon and I think it demonstrates it even more so in these numbers here let's start off with the Tiger Woods iron numbers and I've picked this up every time I come in here I'm drawn to it I love it so a nice steady swing I would say club head speed relatively uh, well, steady 80 mile an hour that's quite slow for me Ball speed, very, very consistent indeed. Spin number consistent. 152 carry. There's barely a yard between, what do they hit, five or six shots. Launch is 19.9, which is quite a high launch, but it's relative to loft. Peak height 95, steep descent angle. Have a look at this in terms of dispersion. That uh, is a decent grouping. And like I said, that was picked up. I'd been doing a bit of club testing, so I was already warmed up. But straight away, you get into that iron. It p feels absolute pure, and they were pretty much landing on top of one another. I love it. And it's nowhere near... One message I'm going to get across in this video is don't be put off by any iron you see lately, I don't think. I think anyone can try any iron, and you might be surprised. But here's another with a T-rail. It's a massively impressive club, this. Club head speed is a little slower. This club head is a little heavier. And uh, the ball speeds, however, 117 ball speeds are sort of five mile an hour up in terms of ball speed. Again, relative to loft. Really good spin number, though. Five, five and a half thousand spin on that strength of loft is really, really good. But again, and I mentioned it in a previous clip, 166 carry. And there's probably, I'm trying to look as I'm reading to you, there's again only two yards of difference between best and worst. But look at that launch angle, 18.3 launch. It's almost launching at the same as the 35 degree uh, Tiger Woods iron, and yet the loft is six degrees difference almost. So it's, a, you know, like I said, there's a lot that goes into this that you need to look at. Here's the dispersion on the T-rail. Not as tight as what we've seen in the Tiger Woods iron, but nonetheless, I'm more than happy with that kind of strike pattern. The yardage difference, which I didn't mention there, is obviously there, and that is very much relative to the strength of the loft. But 
The idea of this video, again, was to look at two extremes, which is right and which is wrong. Well, there isn't one, and that's always the purpose of the videos that I do. When we look at T-Rails, and I say this is a fantastic golf club, it does a fantastic job, the idea is no to tell everybody you should all move and go and buy this club. It's to throw that kind of club into the equation, into the thought process, one that you've maybe not looked at before. But it by no means means that the traditional blade-like clubs are not for you either. It's all about what floats your boat. And like I said, there are different reasons why we choose golf clubs, there are different reasons why we choose to play the game itself. And for me, like I said, for all the help and assistance and the benefits that come from a T-Rail, I'd still be looking to play the Tiger Woods iron. But that's at my level, my handicap level, my swing, and it might be totally different for you. But it's all about gauging opinion. So as I said in a previous clip, Comments down below, which one would you play, and more importantly, why? Right, as ever, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed that one. It was a, a little bit of fun for me because I got to play that iron that I really am desperate to dip my hand in my pocket and, uh, and finally buy. I might just have to do that pretty soon.